All right. Looking at Scotty's deck list, he has got a nice one. Oh, Transmog. Nice. Yeah. All right. This is five color Transmogrify. He is Transmogrifying into Atraxa, Grand Unifier. Got plenty of enchantments and artifacts to find off of it with a Zika's Chariot that sets up Transmog. We've got Shark Typhoon's Leyline Bindings, Chain to the Rocks as removal. Looks like a really cool deck. All right, so Scotty Doolittle here is first on the board playing at that Courier's Briefcase. Uh, Yusuf's going to end of turn, play a Consider, take a look at the top card, keeps it. Back Yusuf's way. These players are playing fast, hot and heavy. You love to see it. Yusuf, turn two, shocks. Watery Grave, down to 18. Let's see if he has Thing in the Ice or something similar. Passes the turn. Back Doolittle's way. Has the creature necessary for the Transmog and the mana, thanks to the briefcase. Could go for it this turn if he thinks Yusuf doesn't have an answer. We'll see what Doolittle wants to do. Yeah, the shock uh, either represents just a bunch more cantrips here for Yusuf, potentially a heartless act, but no counter spells in the list. This is more of a proactive mid range deck, so. Well, we're going for the turn three transmog off the Curry's briefcase. This is the natural curve that the deck loves. It's a one card accelerator and target for the transmog. And we got the fatal push. Yusuf knocks down the combo. Scotty do a little devastated. Okay. So the shock there, yeah, representing two one mana spells there with the fatal push and now the opt. Yeah, and that's going to let him turn towards Dig Through Time so he can use Dig Through Time to find the combo pieces, Archfiend and Metamorphic Alteration. Now, Doolittle will need a creature in play for that combo to kill, but as we've talked about uh, before, Ross, the Archfiend of the Dross can just kill your opponent on its own. doesn't really need a whole lot of help. Yeah, you know, it deals 18 by itself, so it needs, a, it needs two damage of help. Yeah, but its ability adds to that. Sometimes all you got to do is kill one creature from the opponent, so... All right, just another card draw spell and opt here from Bridges and pass this back towards Doolittle. Doolittle going to start rebuilding. Another Courier's Briefcase. Going to make another Citizen. And see if there's anything else. Yeah. The interesting, you know, unclear if Bridges knows exactly what Doolittle is transmogrifying into. Mm. Is it something like Agent of Treachery? Is it, you know, uh, obviously we know it's a Traxa, but, you know, is he... Cre is he going to creativity at some point? Does he have both? Right. Probably not, considering he's got Sun Petal Grove and Glacial Fortress in play. So it's probably, yeah. you know, th th it's not like a brand new deck, but it's not one that you see too much of. So the configuration is likely not completely known to Yusuf. Uh, no plays from Yusuf there with three mana. Going to pass it back after playing a Dark Slick Shore, the fourth land tapped. And Doolittle going to pound in with the Citizen. Are we going for it again? Four mana. Here's Essica's Chariot. Does Yusuf have any counterspell for it? If not, this one's going to be hard to beat straight up. Yeah, very strong card against the heavy removal strategies like Bridges is employing here. Mm. That said, Thing in the Ice, pretty good at clearing it up. Yeah, we'll see if Bridges can maybe find and deploy that. It's going to need it. He's going to need it pretty quick because that's because Chariot's going to be pounding pretty quick here. Yusuf Bridges back his way. Looks like he has Alteration in hand. Looks like he has Archfiend of the Dross in hand. Maybe he wants to tap out here. Decides not to. Going to go for Archfiend plus Alteration next turn as a kill. Maybe going to have a removal cell here for the Eskis Chariot. Now, these Transmog decks usually operate at sorcery speed. So Bridges being patient here with the combo. Going to wait till he gets to six mana. And it looks like that could pay off because Doolittle is sitting on Chain to the Rocks as his piece of interaction. So that's not going to help being a sorcery speed card. All right, here we go. Uh, we have activation of Eskis Chariot. It's going to charge on in. Going to make a token. Yusuf, any responses? Looks like no. Thought I saw Heartless Act. Maybe going to play a Dig Through Time to, I don't know, have backups. Not sure. I, I already saw the combo in hand, so maybe needs the land. So this is an attack for five. Next turn, it'll be an attack for seven. Ooh, perhaps a misstep letting him uh, crew and then attack before killing it with the Heartless Act. Now, still, it keeps enough pressure off of him. He's now down to 15. They're staring down seven powers. So that's a three-turn clock. All right, here's Bitter Union. This is going to give Doolittle maybe a couple more looks at some protection. Use of Bridges looking to combo kill next turn with... Alteration plus Archfiend combo. Yeah. Now we'll explain what the combo does as it gets played, but just know the Alteration plus uh, Archfiend of the Dross, as long as your opponent has a creature, they die. So with Rogrin Triome and Zyatars Proving Ground, Doolittle does have full domain for Leyline Binding, but I think you just drew two lands. All right, here we go. Archfiend of the Dross. This enters with four counters, and then we're going to play Metamorphic Alteration on one of the opposing creatures, and what that does is it turns... 
the opposing creature into an Archfiend of the Dross with no counters. And then if Doolittle goes to his upkeep, controlling the creature with metamorphic alteration on it, he has an Archfiend with no triggers and or no counters. And then when the trigger resolves, he ends up dying. Now, if he can kill his own creature or sacrifice it uh, at the end of turn, the, the ability will not go onto the stack and he won't die. But uh, if he goes to the untapped step with it still in play, he loses. All right, he's asking uh, how the combo works, perhaps uh, unclear in the uh, actual interaction between Metamorphic Alteration and Archfiend of the Dross. But as far as I can tell, Scotty Doolittle is defeated here in game one thanks to this new Splinter Twin-esque combo. Yeah, the judge... Um, some... He's got a, I believe there's a triome of some kind, a, you know, a three mana cycling land to do a little hand. What happens if he leyline binds the alteration with the trigger on the stack? So I think the trigger goes on the stack no matter what, if you go to your upkeep. Yeah. And then even if you kill the creature, even if you turn it into something else, it still says if you can't remove one of the oil counters from it, you lose the game. Well, it says if it has no oil counters. Remove one, and then if it has zero. Sure. But it's still like last on information, like the, the creature put the yeah. ability on the stack, right? The object put the ability on the stack. So we're going to get confirmation, but I'm, I'm fairly confident that Yusuf Bridges here has won game number one. And this new alteration combo, and Doolittle packs it in, doesn't have an answer here, and just, you know, gives it up. And that's the thing, you know, if, if Bridges had gone for the turn five uh, Archfiend, right, uh, it would have got hit with a Chain to the Rocks before he could play it. But when he does it all in one turn, that means that Doolittle needs an instant speed way to either kill the Archfiend of the Dross in response to the alteration, or needs to be able to kill the alteration or his own creature to prevent that from happening. Unfortunately for Doolittle, didn't have it. So now we're going to be moving on to the side boards. You have uh, Doolittle's pulled up. Uh, let's, or start with, yeah, let's start with Yusuf. That's the one I've got here. All right, Ross, tell me what we got and what you think is going to happen. There, I see two copies of Swan Song, two Mystical Dispute, two Disdainful Stroke, two Extinction Event, two Ray of Enfeeblement, one Noxious Grasp, one Duress, and three Reckoner Bank Buster. Um, I really like Swan Song. There's a lot of enchantments actually in yeah. the, this deck, and Swan Song is a nice one in the alteration deck because you give your opponent the creature that you can then alter yes. into your Archfiend. Uh, Disdainful Stroke is going to be excellent against any sort of Fires of Invention deck. Uh, even Mystical Dispute could come in. There's not a ton of actual blue cards in Doolittle's deck, but 3-mana Mana Leak might be good enough. Um, definitely like the Duress, the extra Duress, because there's two in the main. And I also kind of like the Bank Busters as another way to just generate card advantage and sit back. Uh, and that'll eventually become a threat as well. So a very good sideboard here for use of Bridges in this matchup. Okay, well... Uh... Why don't we take a look at old Scotty Doolittle's sideboard with this uh, Transmogrified deck and see what he's got coming on in. So we have the one Yorian Sky Nomad. There's three copies of Rest in Peace, two Supreme Verdict, three Rending Volley, three Mystical Dispute, and also one World Spine Worm and two Sire of, of Insanity if he wants to switch up his Transmogrify game. Okay. Now, Sire of Insanity can be good in this matchup if you get it to go off, but... Uh, is going to be very weak to the four copies of Heartless Act in Bridges. List. Yeah, I agree. I think it tracks us pretty clearly the best for that yeah. spot because not only does it uh, like give you a burst of card advantage back after having like a really long attrition game plan, but like you know you just get to find Leyline Binding, which protects you from the combo. Which yeah, is nice. So. My, if I were Doolittle, my goal would be to try to attract so with at least a mana up or a man, or two, depending on how expensive the Leyline Binding is going to be. Uh, and, you know, dig for that Leyline Binding and protect myself from the combo. All right, well, as these two players are finishing up sideboarding and shuffling up for game number two, I want to take a moment and shout out our sponsors. Thanks to Ultimate Guard for sponsoring the Apex Gaming Circuit. They have given us tons of swag, not only to give out today, but to all of our AIQs. We got four Cortex sleeves, one Katana sleeves, two boulders, a Sidewinder, and an Archive deck box, all going to the top eight competitors of every Apex Invitational Qualifier that we run in the next couple months in Season 3. Make sure to check out apexgaming.gg, and you can find an AIQ near you where we're giving away tons of those Ultimate Guard prizes. Also, shout out to G Fuel Energy for keeping us hydrated and energized as we pl uh, play and do commentary for these long days of magic. And also, shout out to Wings Etc. for keeping us full, keeping us lubricated as we... Uh, Need some way to release some steam after the end of these weekends, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm ready for some cauliflower wings already. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, all right, okay, Ross. So this alteration combo deck, I'm sure you got thoughts on it. So why don't you just give me like your mildest take of the deck? What do you think about it? You know, where do you think it's going to be in Pioneer in two years? Uh, I, I think it is quite strong. I, it's certainly not on the level of a deck like Inverter. Uh, the fact that Inverter was so immune to creature removal, despite being nominally a creature-based combo, I thought was part of what made that combo so effective and so difficult to stop. Um, but this is still, you know, quite good, very competitive. Um, my one issue is it seems like people are, especially with the Grixis builds, they're just kind of slotting it into an existing deck. Yeah. And I would rather take this new combo and build something from the ground up around it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think this Demir version does. It's why I prefer it over the Grixis builds. So uh, I haven't seen um, a lot of variation in the builds, but w one thing I might like to see is more of a... Uh, like obviously the Grixis builds are all Fable the Mirror Breaker. Like you're trying to play like a Grixis mid range deck or even yeah. Rakdos mid range splashing just for alteration. But I also see people kind of splashing for dig through time, which is almost nonsense considering how the mana bases are developed. Like people are playing a bunch of pathways, and you play a pathway on black, your dig through time is basically dead at that point. Um, you know the two turn or turn two Blood Tithe Harvester for Rakdos mana doesn't really play well with Consider. Doesn't really play well with Dig Through Time. What I want to see is like, I don't know, like a, a a freshly built version that even if it's Grixis colors, that just doesn't have those like headbutt moments in deck building. Like I just don't really understand how you play a black red two drop and Dig Through Time and Consider. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's all about the vibes, Todd. Well, the vibes on those builds are not great, but the vibes on Yusef Bridges' build is immaculate. Very big fan of Thing in the Ice and Awoken Horror backside of it. Uh, we are here for game number two. Doolittle going to be on the play. Taking a look at its opener. Looks like we got Bitter Union, two lands. Fable the Mirror Breaker, going to keep that for sure. Yeah. And importantly, his two lands produce all four of the most relevant colors of mana for his deck. All right, turn one, Watery Grave for Yusef Bridges on the shot. Going to pass the turn back. Maybe has just Opter Consider, but perhaps... Uh, boarded in some sort of one-man interaction like Swan Song. Here's Birth of Melitus. That's going to go get a Plains, Chapter 1. Chapter 2 and 3 are a little uh, bit better for the deck. You get an 0-4 wall, and then you gain some life. The Plains is strong, too, especially because you're playing, uh, you know, this, like, Transmogrify shell, right? And you need to hit the land drops to hit the fourth land, but the 0-4 that it makes on Chapter 2 is excellent. As someone who likes playing Mopey Aggro decks, this card is the bane of my existence. <laughs> Here to consider. Oh, you also played a ton of uh, against Cory on Versus Live, and I'm sure he just yes. always did Birth of Melita stuff, right? It was like his favorite card in the history of the universe. <laughs> uh, we put a Fabled Pass into the Graveyard with a Consider Surveil. That one is a little bit questionable in a two-color mana base, but it's a great way to turn on uh, Fatal Push. It's a good way to enable uh, those devil spells with Dig Through Time. Obviously, entering Tapped in the early turns, not great, which is why you have binned it. Yeah, but that was card was a, a staple of inverted X, which were also dig decks, so makes sense to see it here. Okay, uh, chapter two of Birth of Meltus does give an 0-4 wall, and we do see Transmogrify hiding out in Doolittle's hand, so maybe next turn we have a threat yeah. there. Hasn't found another land yet, just the one off of the birth, so it's going to need the second chapter of Fable to help him out and find that fourth land. All right, here is Fable the Mirror Breaker, and we're going to make a 2-2 Goblin, and then Yusef has Fatal Push out the ready for it. Well, it's another one mana spell. Another consider. Top card. With all the cards I liked in the use of sideboard, I thought we would see a severe reduction in spot removal. Mm -hmm. Since and that said, the spot removal is quite good against Transmogrify, so you got to leave in some. But maybe it was Heartless Act that that got the cut. Ra would rather leave in the cheaper piece mm -hmm. of interaction. All right, Yusuf. Benza thoughts he's on the consider. Finds another one for the turn. Going to go ahead and play that. Taking a look at Scotty Doolittle's hand, we have Leyline Binding, a Yu-Gi-Oh card, Bitter Union, Shark Fable the Mirror, <laughs> Fable the Mirror Breaker, and Transmogrify. Uh, Yusuf, what do you think it's going to take here? We're about to hit the chapter two of the Fable, right? So, like, what, what's yeah. the best line here? Well, it depends how scared you are of the Transmogrify. If you're scared of it, you probably have to take it. Other than that, I would think I would just take Leyline Binding since it's the card that interacts with my combo. To me, the fable and shark, the second fable and the shark typhoon are sort of value threats. Yep. So if you take one, they just play the other, and they're yep. in a similar spot. Uh, and you certainly can't take the bitter union and just leave him with a bunch of goodies. 
All right, uh, I'm I'm a pretty big fan of leyline binding. Even if I don't have the answer for the transmog, I'm just gonna pretend like I do, and then just like hope you know hope yeah. they don't go for it. I think that's a very common thing to do against like the two card combo decks in the yeah. format because like they're just so scared of you having untapped mana that even if you don't have it, they'll oftentimes just not go for yeah. it. Especially after you did it to him in game one, so you know your opponent has it, cognizant of it. Yeah, but Doolittle, I think, is a really heads-up player, so I think there's a chance that Doolittle just understands that there are spots where you have to go for it, and yeah. maybe with this transmog, he just has to hope, like, uh, it was a big bluff, right? Because those Leyline Bindings are so potent against your combo. Yeah. He certainly just jammed in game one, so, you know, into a bunch of open Demure mana. We'll see how he decides to play it here. It does find the fourth lane off the top in a stomping ground. Yeah, he's considering what to discard for the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Leaning Shark Typhoon, Bitter Union. I'm definitely down to discard Bitter Union. That's just another thing that cycles. Two cards here. We find two more lands. Not really what you want. Maybe should have kept the Shark Typhoon, if I'm being honest. Here comes Fable of the Mirror Breaker number two. Does Yusuf have Counterspell or something similar? No. Another right. Goblin. So being a little more patient with the Transmogrify in this game is Scotty Doolittle. And I think that makes sense given the threats they can deploy. As long as you can lean on your opponent with these Fables, you know, you're going to get a Reflection next turn. If you get to the second Reflection, you can go off with those as sort of mini combo. Here's another removal spell that you've drawn out of Bridge's hand. So you can just run him out of resources and then maybe you know resolve the Transmog that way by leaning on your opponent with the, all the fair stuff. All right, Yusuf here. Uh, going to his turn four, has thought he's number two. Going to take oh. Transmog and leave Doolittle with just two lands, but thankfully for Doolittle, it does have another Fable the Mirror Breaker that's going to hit Chapter 2, so he can discard those lands and draw some spells. Yeah. Unlikely that Yusuf's Demir deck can remove an enchantment from the battlefield. Yeah. What's the... Uh, there's one that people play. It's like Feed the Swarm or whatever. Yeah. That one's a weirdo one, but... Unlikely, but not impossible. All right, Bridges... Uh, looks like dig through time and a couple black cards, yeah. maybe a heartless act or something to protect I themselves. Definitely saw a heartless act. So it looks like he left in quite a bit of removal. All right, discard two lands. Looks like we found a blue card and another so land. I think, I think a shark typhoon land. Well, why would you have battling shark typhoon pictures? Please, please. please. All right, do a little gonna shock and a pass of the turn here would just be a. Uh, big telegraph for Shark Typhoon, but I think Yusuf's fine with the Shark Typhoon. A 3-3 three, three is not uh, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're about to assemble Splinter Twin, it's not that big a deal. Yusuf is at 12. So his life, he's, he's been dealing himself a good chunk of damage with these Shocklands and Thought Seizes. So 3-3 three, three Shark does represent a decent amount of pressure, especially once it starts getting copied by that second reflection. Yusuf is now down, you know, I see five removal spells in the graveyard. Three Heartless Axe and two Fatal Pushes. Mm -hmm. And that might be another removal. Is that a Thought Seize? Are you looking at the graveyard? Yeah. It doesn't matter. All right, moving on. Bridges. I see Alteration. I see, I think, another Heartless Act. Doesn't have the dig through time I thought he did. He's been searching for it pretty hard, I bet. End of turn. We're going to do Shark Typhoon for three. Make a 3-3 three, three Shark. Start putting some real pressure on Yusuf. Now, does the shark come in with X plus one plus one counters on it? No, or is it it's it, just it a, is an XX okay. base power and toughness? Cool. So the Heartless Act can kill even if it's huge, which is nice. Yusuf gonna take the three. Do little. Bunch of mana to work with. We'll see what spells he's got. I guess Fable number three. Oh, Ooh. buys Yorian. Oh, just a bunch of lands in hand, it looks like. Yorian next turn could be pretty sweet, though. And it's just another big body with the bridges at nine life. All right, and we're going to go ahead and kill the backside of Fable and the Mirror Breaker. Just grind and Yusuf down on resources. Just alteration left in hand. I believe he drew a second alteration for the turn. No, I was wrong. Oh, I was right. Turns into an 04. Okay, so now you got a pair of walls. Okay. Neat. Alteration doing cool stuff. We do get to play Yorian here, which is a reasonable size threat, but nothing to blink that matters. Yeah, this is just a question of can Yusuf find the Archfiend? Could find it, dig through time, and dig it to land Archfiend as yep. well. All right, Cycle Triumph. Deciding not to play the Yorian this turn. Just going to play Fabled Passage after the cycle. Maybe you want a little like more value. Play. I, I'm... Bomb, do little. I'm trying to pressure Yusuf as much as I can. 
use of draws for turn i believe has a second alteration in hand but curious what the last card is maybe drew inverter and wants to like play inverter but wants maybe the sixth land first All right, we're going to go back mm -hmm. Doolittle's way. We're going to fetch. If you're not under any pressure, there's no real reason to, to run out the Archfiend if he had drawn it. Well, you just give him one more turn to find the removal if he didn't already have it, right? So You're going to get that turn anyway. Maybe. All right, draw for turn. Finds another land. Do we play the Yorian? Looks like we're going for it. This would be a spot where, like, Eska's Chariot or something would be great, right? Any threat. Yeah. Dorian's fine. Chariot be good. Transmog. At this All point, right. we could probably hard cast an Atraxa. Yusuf, back your way. Did you find Dig Through Time? Do you have the Alteration combo? Do you find the land? You're thinking nice. Guys. But are we out of Heartless Acts? We are, but I think uh, it's a fine play. You can always draw, like, Dig into a chain of things that can flip it, and that'd be cool. Did have the Archfiend to draw. Doing a Hail Mary play here. Gonna play the Archfiend yeah. dry with Alteration in hand. We'll see if Doolittle can find an answer. If not, he's threatening to lose the Alteration combo next turn. Yeah. Now that Bridges is under pressure from the Yorian, even without the sixth land, he feels it necessary to run out the Archfiend, and I think that makes sense. All right, we're gonna go back Doolittle's way. Essentially has one draw step here to find a kill spell for the Archfiend. Otherwise, Metamorphic Alteration is going to turn one of those opposing creatures into a no-counter Archfiend of the Dross and win Yusuf the game essentially on the spot. Here we go. What if that's Scotty. another land? Ooh. Scotty Doolittle has been Scotty defeated. <laughs> Here we go. Back Yusuf's way. It's more like Scotty do flooded. <laughs> that's pretty good. All right, Fatal Push is the draw, but we know about the alteration. Let's see if Yusuf goes for it. I feel like there's few better spots to do it than now. If the Archfiend is still in play, that means that Doolittle did not have the removal spell for it. Otherwise, he would have been attacked for four damage. Here we go. Thing the ice first. Maybe a little bit of a bait. Hard cast. Uh, mystical dispute here would be embarrassing. I would have much rather played <laughs> the alteration yeah, first. And there are disputes in Doolittle's sideboard. But. All right, cheese them out. Yusuf Bridges wins game number two and the match with Demir Alteration combo. That Metamorphic Alteration plus Archfiend of the Dross combo seems pretty good. Yeah, the Doolittle's deck just not really able to pressure uh, Bridges, and the Transmogrify is really difficult to resolve against a deck that has a bunch of spot removal and counter spells. Right. Yeah. I mean, we watched that whole game, right? It was literally just Thought Seize, Thought Seize, removal, 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 removal. And then eventually Doolittle ran out of stuff. And then, oh, I peeled Archfiend of the Dross. Okay, I'll cast it. Oh, I already had Metamorphic Alteration rolled up. I'll cast it. You're dead. Yeah. Now, you know, to be fair, Doolittle did flood there in that second game. Uh, but, you know, his deck doesn't have a ton of card advantage if he can't resolve Transmogrify into right. Atraxa. And if that's really difficult to resolve, as it is in this matchup, then flooding is very likely. Because it's a deck with a ton of mana sources. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of air in it for, you know, various cards that just make tokens like Birth of Melitis is a poor draw late, Fires of Invention a poor draw late. So, yeah, really just a, a matchup where it, his deck doesn't really line up well against what Bridges is doing. All righty. Well, uh, we don't have any more feature matches to bring you, but uh, there's still a decent amount of time in the round. So I'm going to go scout the field and see if we have anyone we can bring over and put on camera for y'all. We're going to take just a short break here. Hopefully we'll be back for more of round number one coverage. But if not, uh, we will be back for round number two in just a few. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.